In Civ 6 or Civilization 6, unless you have a permanent spot in the Mom's Basement Club and have logged 8300 hours on the game, you are probably making more mistakes than people who date the Kardashians. So in this video, I'll talk about 5 mistakes everyone makes in Civilization 6, why they're bad, and what you, yes you, can do to change them. Let me know some other mistakes I miss down below and like and subscribe if you do enjoy. I also have a second channel where I make super Super highly edited content and the last minute of this video has a sample so I'd appreciate it if you guys could check it out and if you like what you see I'll post the channel in the pinned comment. In any case let's get started. The first mistake is one I figured out by accident a year ago. The Ilkum policy card gives 30% production to builders which sounds great as you can get cities up and running a lot quicker than usual due to builders being something you're gonna want early and getting a nice boost towards them can help you get that faster. But what a lot of people don't realize as they plug in this card as mindlessly as a walking dead zombie is that early game you're getting limited usage out of this as 30% of 1 to 2 production is less than 1. And depending on what tiles you have nearby, most of the time your early cities that you just settle for like 30 or 40 turns, you're only going to have 2 to 4 production. Maybe not 30 or 40 turns, but usually in the first uh, 20 turns let's say you're not going to make more than four production as you're waiting for the city to get bigger work more tiles and get a couple builders and districts to make the city stronger and while it might seem like it's better than nothing we see a new challenger approaching on the horizon urban planning urban planning gives plus one production to all cities for free no questions asked no background check no credit card statement required it's like the game is a predatory loan shark giving you that one production for for free, which if we do the math, do the friend plus two, so 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 so, carry the two, it turns out it actually helps you build builders faster than Ilka most of the time. Because if we take the early game two to four production, most cities have until a couple of improvements in, which you obviously need the builder for that, that amounts to an extra 0.6 to 1.3 production. But this production is only for builders for some reason. Like like you try to put it towards anything else and the game's just gonna stop you there buddy but urban planning gives you one production for everything and unless you're trying to get more builders than skyrim ports now on the smart fridge you'll be able to make more broad use of urban planning which will give you more value overall than ilkum could ever give and a lot of the time it's even gonna help you build builders faster than ilkum ever could now if you desperately need a builder or two and you have you know seven to eight production cities or something then it is possible to get more total value out of the ilkum but a lot of the time that isn't the case most of the time you should be taking urban planning uh, almost unanimously autocracy is garbage it's more worthless than the american dollars in the 19th 30s. It's that bad. Now, let's take a look at all tier 1 governments and compare them, you know, have a nice little discussion on the intricacies of different governing styles in the early game. We see Autocracy gives the most balanced policy card slots at 1 Military, 1 Economic, 1 Diplomatic, and 1 Wild Card. Oligarchy doesn't have a Diplo slot, but has two military slots, which if we're being completely honest, isn't a good trade-off, as military is probably one of the worst, although it isn't that bad, because Diplo's probably the second worst, although honestly, when it comes to the policy card placement, Autocracies is just better. And Classical Republic has two economic slots, and no military slots, and one of everything else. But honestly, I think everyone would rather have the two economic than one of each every time. They're just that good. Now, here's the thing. Would you rather have two, four different types of food or sacrifice the worst one for another portion of the best one? Simple question, honestly. So, Autocracy comes in second when it comes to policy card placement. But Oligarchy isn't the worst overall because it gives you plus four combat strength for melee units and 20% extra experience generation, which knocks Autocracy out of the park, as it only gives you 10% production towards wonders, which is damn near worse worthless unless you're China, and you get one to all yields, yields to every palace, diplo quarter, and government plaza, which can, if you want to build a diplo quarter, give you plus three to 
all heals in the early game, which, um, yeah, no, I'm gonna take the extra combat strength and experience so I can knock those guys and absolutely wipe them out from human history. And if you don't want to do that, if you have a moral compass, Classical Republic gives you 15% great people point generation, one amenity, and one housing. Yeah, no contest, Classical Republic is the best if you want to Sim City, and Oligarchy lets you bash heads in a little easier. So unless you're spamming wonders that you actually need, like maybe you're trying to get the early Stonehenge, or you're going for an early wonder spam type of game for a culture victory, or you just want the Temple of Artemis, Colosseum, and Great Library, then you might need Autocracy, but it's pretty much more neglected and should be more neglected than world history is outside of Europe or the Americas. It's pretty much Cinderella without the fairy godmother, and a lot of the times, unless you're in specific circumstances, autocracy is just a worthless government. Like MLK said, I have a dream, but my dream is to get the amount of people unsubscribed down to 69% for the memes, so if you do enjoy the video, leave a like and subscribe to help me achieve my goals. Forcing a transition to a different government that really doesn't suit your needs goes about as well as landowners in Russia in the 20th century. Sometimes transitioning governments is not the best option, and that is mainly in two instances, so think of this as a potential mistake that happens sometimes. A lot of the times you're going to want to get new governments to get the extra policy cards, but these two instances, when you're going from war from tier 1 to tier 2, or tier 3 to tier 4, should be something you think twice, thrice, quadrice about. I don't know if that's a word, but I just made it up. The experience and four combat strength for melee units that we talked about for oligarchy is too good to pass up in most domination games unless you have no melee units like Genghis or Grand Columbia or you can make use of the other governments a lot better like Byzantium or you're playing Babylon because you could do whatever on Babylon and still win the game before turn 200. Tier 2 governments in most cases suck which is great considering how shitty the real life middle ages were but monarchy should be renamed to Georgia, because that's the only time I would ever find it being decent, shut up phone. Theocracy is mainly for religious, which unless you're the Civ 6 Dilf, you're not going to be wanting. And Merchant Republic, while being the best one for a domination game, giving you one military, two economic, two diplomatic, one wildcard slot, versus the two one zero one you get from Oligarchy, you know, the two extra policy cards can be useful, but in a domination game, you're gonna need to use one of them to get the Oligarchic Legacy card card in domination, so it's more like you have one extra card as the plus four combat strength for melee units is too good not to use. And I'd rather give up one wild card slot even in order to get 20% unit experience as archers attacking faster than a Looney Tunes character is definitely worth it. And Merchant Republic ends up giving you really 10% extra gold, which in all honesty isn't going to change your game or anything unless you're someone like Mansa Musa. And the same thing thing also goes from transitioning from fascismo to keep Susan off my trail to tier 4 governments, as none of the tier 4 ones are good for a domination one, but fascismo gives plus 5 combat strength to all units and reduces war weariness, letting you finish off a domination victory at Mach 1 speed, Mach 1 speed, with planes and tanks. Settling for sub-optimal locations, especially in your first city, is abysmally bad. Like, this is going to be your capital city, your creme de la creme, your best city for the entire game, the dude with the name in Chinese in a game of League of Legends on the North American server, and you're going to settle for less than perfection? You always move your settler if it's towards a much better location. The yields you miss from one to two turns of moving that settler is more than made up for when you get extra yields, better districts, by moving that settler to a much more favorable location. In all honesty, I think think people are mostly afraid of falling behind, you know, wasting a turn or two moving their settlers can be risky, as one flood, natural disaster, or finding out the area you move to sucks even worse than the original start is pretty demoralizing. But like MLK said, risks must be taken to give deity a spanking. You can also normally tell what your surrounding area is like, as with the warrior, which you should always move first for this reason, you can
can move and tell if the potentially good spots areas is really as good as you think it is. Especially move the settler if you can get a Plains Hill tile to settle on, as that one extra production at the start of the game is absolutely huge, and you'll actually build stuff you want faster, as gaining one production per turn for skipping a turn makes a profit in about two turns, as normally you'll only get one production in your city's center location. In fact, I might have to write Art of the Deal this time after sharing this business insider secret. Hopefully Bill Gates doesn't send an assassin after me for saying that, but hey, let's get into the next tip. This one is something we have all done before. In fact, it's like a college hazing experience for Civ players. Picture this. You're getting ready to blo plop down this gorgeous beauty of a campus district. This campus is worth double digits. You've never seen anything like it. Surrounded by two reefs, two mountains, and a potential government plaza. Absolutely sensational. With natural philosophy, you'll produce more geniuses than Oxford and Harvard combined, and almost as many as the Reddit moderator broke. <laughs> I couldn't even finish that without laughing. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Back to the video. And then you research ironworking. Guess where the iron spawned? You quit the game out of rage, you lose your job, your wife leaves you and takes the children, and you settle in the local crack den behind the Walmart, lamenting your mistake that cost you everything. D do you want this to be you? Of course not. So don't, and I mean don't research strategic resources unless it's absolutely necessary. Because if you get your districts all messed up, that could cost you all the careful planning you've been doing all game. You can sort of tell where they might spawn if you're kind of astute enough, I guess, as iron needs to be on hills with nothing on them, no resources, no forests, and horses need to be on grassland or plains without anything on them as well. So you can maybe think to yourself, okay, I really need bronze working and iron working for some reason, and I have none of my districts placed on hills without any forests, so I should be safe. And yes, sometimes you also want to be on the warpath, so you do have to research iron in this instance, but in peaceful games where you're just trying to sim city and get great districts, don't research resources. If you have enjoyed, as always, leave a like and subscribe, and this last minute is going to be a sort of sample from my other channel. Check it out, and if you do enjoy it and want to check out more, the link will be in the pinned comment down below. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.